Hey, how's it going? Have you been thinking about building your own Webflow component library, but haven't been quite sure where to start? Stay tuned, because today I'm going to show you exactly what you need to build something like this. This is a component library I recently released with 62 components at the time of filming this. A quick use case, you can open up the component, click this copy to Webflow button, come over to your Webflow project, and in the body we'll paste it, and at the bottom you see our CTA4 down here. I've set up a little example. We're not gonna build the whole component library, but I set up a tiny little thing here. We've got header three and hero two. If we come to hero two and click on it, we click copy for Webflow, and we come back, we'll see, we get hero two again. Now, this is all, when you copy something in Webflow, let's say we've built testimonial one here and we wanna add this to our CMS to make it copyable in our component library. If I copy this testimonial one component, you can see, and then I go over to something like Google Docs and try to paste, nothing shows up, right? But if I come to this website uh, that has a clipboard inspector, if I paste, we can see that it's actually application JSON that's copied to our clipboard, and it's this whole big JSON that we're getting here. It looks pretty ugly, but if I select all this and copy, and I go to a code sandbox file, let's say I have a, well, let's just delete what we have here, test.json, and I paste, it's all on one line, but if I save, it's gonna auto format for me, and I can see, this is what the Webflow JSON is that we're copying, pasting between projects. So what we wanna do with our website is we wanna give users the ability to press this copy to Webflow button and put that JSON on their clipboard. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do. So if we go to our Webflow project here, um, let's go to the homepage. On the homepage, I just have a simple grid with a CMS collection. And the CMS collection just links to each individual uh, component. Let's see if I come to the link block here, goes to current component. Let's take a quick tour of the components collection. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. So you see I have header two and header three. If we look at header three, I just have a name, I have a slug, and then I have the JSON here that I used to copy, copy paste from, and I have a screenshot. And now if I come back to the components template page, which each of these is directing to. Here I have just a heading that I'm pulling from the CMS. Uh, so it's getting the name, the that image, it's pulling the image that I just made a simple little screenshot for. And then I have this button here, and this button is where all the action is gonna happen. So let's see, if I open the navigator, within the button, it's actually just a link block. So not um, it's not this button element, it's just a link block element. And inside of that, I have button text and I have another text block, but it's hidden. And this text block here, if I change it to block, that's our whole JSON. So sneaky, sneaky, we're hiding this all within the button. And the button text says copy to Webflow. And the other thing I wanna show you on the settings tab over here is I set the roll to button so that screen readers know this is a button and not a link. And then I also set this uh, data attribute WB data equals copy button. And I have WB data equals text on the text. And for the JSON, I have WB data equals JSON. And this is so that we can access these elements from our JavaScript and run the code that we need to. So the other thing I have set up within the components template here is I have a script tag, and this is linking to an index.js file that's hosted by Code Sandbox. So let's go and have a look at that script. Uh, this was the test.json. I'm going to go to index.js. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write the code that copies that JSON to the clipboard when the user presses the copy button. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get a reference to the copy button. And we're going to do that with const copy button equals document.query selector. And we're going to put that data attribute selector with it right inside there. I'm going to move this off screen. But we're going to listen for click on copy button. So we're going to add an event listener on copy button. And it's going to be the event of click. And when that event, we're going to define an, a function here is what we're doing. And we're going to start putting some JavaScript within that function. So we have button text we're gonna get, and that's just doing copy button dot query selector of that data attribute of text. Again, remember, these are just stored. Uh, let's see if I select button and then I go to text. These are what I'm referring to here. Hopefully this isn't too new to you. And then what we wanna do is we wanna change that button text to say copying or something, just to inform the user that something's actually going on. And then we're gonna say button text dot text content equals copying to do that. Now what we want to do is we want to listen for the copy event. And to do that, we just, on the document, we add an event listener. 
And the event that we're looking for is the one called copy. And we're going to want to call this function copy JSON, which is not yet defined, but I will get to that in just a second. Uh, we're going to listen for that copy command. Right after that, we're going to execute a copy command, which we just do with this document.exec command of copy. And then right after that, we're going to remove that listener, which will allow us to do normal copy paste functionality again. So document.remove event listener. And then this is why I defined it within a function is so that we can remove the event listener after the fact. But I'm going to define the function right up here. And so let's just put some comments on there, define the function to copy JSON. So again, this copy JSON is what's referred to down here. And that's going to receive an event. And the first thing we want to do is prevent the default um, prevent the default behavior that happens on a copy event. Right after that, we're going to grab that component JSON from the copy button. So within the copy button, we're going to query for um, some a node with the data attribute of JSON, like we defined in our Webflow project. And from that, we're going to say dot text content. And that's going to define the text within the div. Uh, so if I come here and I open up Inspector, let me zoom in again, and I click on the button here, we can see we have that, you know, that link block, that A tag. And then within that, we have the text in a div that's JSON. That's the embed div that um, Webflow gives us. Sorry, not the embed div, but the, uh, the CMS uh, text div. And then within that is where we have the text. So that's when we <clears throat> so that's why we want to say text content. Keep going. We're going to on the event, we're going to get clipboard data and we're going to set the data. It takes two arguments. It's going to take the type that we're setting and the actual data itself, which is component JSON. So we know we want to pass it that JSON, and we want to tell our clipboard that it's an application JSON type. Now, the last thing to do is after one second, we're going to set the button text back from copying to back to whatever we want it to be. In this case, it's going to say copy for Webflow. So to do that, we use a set timeout block. And set timeout takes two parameters. One is a, a function, and we're just using an anonymous function here. And then the second parameter is time in milliseconds. Here we're saying 1,000 sec uh, 1, milliseconds, so one second. You could change this if you want it to be faster or slower. And all we got to do within that is say button text dot text content equals copy to Webflow surrounded in quotes because it's a string. And now if we save that and we come back to our page here, let me close this out. I'm going to refresh and I can click copy for Webflow. It says copying and then it's gone. Now if I come into Webflow and let's go to our test page here and I want to open up the navigator body and if I click paste, then you'll notice we copied our Hero 2 component there. So the code is working right as we want it to. And now as the last example, let's take this testimonial one and add it to our CMS. I'll just show you how easy that is. So I want to get the whole section, and I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And now if I come to the CMS, you'll notice, let's say I add new component, testimonial one, and I copy and paste the JSON, nothing's pasting. And that's because we've copy and paste it as application JSON, and this is expecting text. So let's just go to Clipboard Inspector, and if I paste, uh, let me paste that again. I just want to make sure I got the right thing here. Let's discard the changes. Come in here, section, and I'll just refresh this page just to be sure. And paste. So this is our testimonial one component. And I copy. And now I come back to our CMS. Add component, testimonial one, JSON. Looks like that. I'm just going to backspace there, create. Now we need to give it an image real quick, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna do something quick and easy. Taking a screenshot here, boom. Come back in here, testimonial one. And now let me get that screenshot. I think it's this one here. Yep, so that's loaded up. Let's go ahead and save. Come out, and we'll go to our home. And now we see testimonial one has loaded up here. Let's go ahead and publish. And I'll open this in a new tab. We'll go into testimonial one. We see it here. Copy for Webflow. Copying. Come back to our project. Let's go to a test page. Then the body. We'll paste. Come down. And we've got testimonial one. So really cool. Hopefully you found this useful. Learn some new code, learn how you could build, start um, taking components from your own builds and saving them and uh, sharing them with the community. All right, that's it. Um, some other things, I'll be putting the code for this within my ultimate resource library. 
If you like this video, please check that out. I'll put a link how to get this in the description below. Please like and subscribe. And then also I just released my Patreon. I got my first couple subscribers, which is very exciting. If you wanna subscribe, I'm gonna start adding even more behind the scenes looks, behind the scenes looks, behind the scenes looks. Anyways, on how I built this component library, I did quite a bit more. You'll notice uh, if we just inspect, it takes a second to load. That's because I hosted everything um, on, on GitHub. So let's see, GitHub, Leary JK. If I go to my repositories, component library, you can see I stored everything within here just to stay a little bit more organized. I have all the JSONs and then I have all the HTML and I store the HTML as well because I wanna be able to create um, live previews for users rather than a picture like we did in the example. This this preview is live and so you can, you know, it'll show you what happens as you resize the window and all that stuff. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this and thanks again. Catch you in the next one. Okay.